What's up guys, Justin here with TheCGEssentials.com back with another Blender animation tutorial for you today. So in today's video, we're gonna do kind of an introduction to camera tracking using a video inside of Blender. Basically what this does is this will track the motion of a camera in your scene, allowing you to simulate that scene inside of Blender, which lets you add objects and effects and other things like that inside of your scene. So. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this is a video I took just sitting at a desk. Um, it's a very simple piece of paper with a bunch of X's that I drew on it that we're gonna use as markers that we're gonna track in order to create a scene inside of Blender. So it's gonna be very simple. You can do something very much like this and follow along. But what we wanna do is we wanna start off by bringing this image into Blender. So the way that you're gonna do that is you're going to Click on the plus button right here and we want a new window. We want a VFX motion tracking window. And so what this does is this has a number of different tools in here for bringing a video file in and then tracking it. And so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna click on the open button. We wanna open our video. And so we can zoom out right here. That's how we can click the play button in here to play that video. So first thing you're gonna notice is the colors are kind of weird in here. So what we wanna do is we wanna go into our scene, color management, and we wanna set our view transform to standard. So then this is gonna have more the color that you used when you were actually like taking the video. So there's a couple other things that we're gonna to wanna to change as well. So we're gonna switch our render engine to cycles. Um, I'm gonna set my device to GPU compute um, just cause that's gonna render faster for me. Um, I'm probably gonna turn on adaptive sampling and denoising, but th those are all things that are more gonna affect what you do later. Um, there is an important one under film that you need to turn on. You need to turn on transparent right here. So make sure that you've checked the box for transparent. That's gonna be important when we put our plane in later. And so what we've got in here is we've got three sections. We've got a tracking dope sheet over here, which we're not going to worry too much about today. We've got our 3D viewport, which is where our 3D models are going to be. That's just like a um, normal blender viewport. And then we've got our camera viewport down here. It's our video clip where we're going to set up our tracking. And so there's a few things we want to do to set this up. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna go into our output properties. We wanna make sure that our frame rate over here matches the frame rate of our video. So I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna set this to 29.97. So I want this number to match with this number because basically what this is gonna do is it's going to analyze every frame in our scene in here. So you just wanna make sure that the frames are set up properly. Okay, so once we've done that, we wanna click on the button to set the scene frames right here. And so notice how that set the number of frames in here to the number of frames that are in our video. So then there's an option over here for prefetch. And basically what that's gonna do is that's going to prefetch those frames and put them on your disc so that it's faster to do your playback and your tracking. So you wanna go ahead and you wanna click on this. It's gonna take a minute to prefetch those frames. And so notice how this blue bar right here basically shows you how many frames are prefetched. Okay, so next, we wanna come over here and we wanna adjust our tracking settings. And so for right now, um, we're not gonna to get too far into these. Just know that you wanna set this to be normalized. So you wanna click on the button for normalize right here. And we wanna set our correlation to be 90%. So we're gonna set this to 0.9. And so basically what that does is Blender is basically gonna look at that value and it's gonna use that value to figure out the how sure it is that it's tracking the right area in your video. So we're just gonna set it to 0.9 for right now. All right, so one other thing we wanna do, and then we're gonna look for some tracking points, is we wanna go ahead and we wanna set our motion model to perspective. So basically what this is, is this is the model that this is using to try to determine the way that your camera is moving. So um, there's a great, there's a great Q&A post right here where there's a question where they ask what the different tracker motion models do. And so basically it walks through location only is only gonna look for changes in translation. Um, there's other options in here as well, but I think in this case perspective is gonna let this track in all dimensions. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use the perspective option. So just go to motion model and click on perspective. And then what we wanna do, so I'm gonna click on the button for detect features. And so mine is set up properly. Yours may default to something more like this. And so what we want is we want more trackers, 
Right, and remember that Blender is basically going to use this to try to track the movement of your camera. Well, the problem is some of these trackers are going to lose tracking at some point in your scene. So we wanna make sure we have more of them than just this. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set my threshold down to something like 0 0.01, and then you can adjust the distance between them to maybe something like 60 in order to get more trackers in your scene. I'm specifically focused on these trackers right here. But uh, now we have a number of different trackers in our scene. What we wanna do is we just wanna hit Control T on our keyboard in order to track. So I'm just gonna do a Control T. And notice how what that's gonna do is that's going to try to track the movement of your scene inside of Blender. And so notice how you get a bunch of like reds in here and other things like that. You don't need to worry too much about that for right now. Basically what this is doing is this is trying to track the movement of various points in here. So if you look at this one, for example, it's got the end point of our X right here and it's following it around. And notice how if we kind of like scrub through this forward and back, this is actually doing a really good job of tracking those X's. But if we look at this uh, graph down below, notice what we get is we get um, a bunch of these are kind of staying in the central area, which is what we want, but a few of them kind of jump around a little bit. And so if I was to click on this, for example, notice how the tracker that I clicked on gets selected in my scene. And if we watch this, notice how this one's kind of like jumping around, even though my camera view isn't, right? Like that's not really a very good point for tracking. And so what it's gonna do is it's gonna introduce errors or questions into your scene, right? Like notice how it's flying around even though my camera isn't. Well, in a lot of cases, what you wanna do is you just wanna come in here and you just wanna delete those. So you can just click on them and then you can either type X down below to delete the curve or you can click up here and click on delete track. But notice how what that's done is that's got rid of the tracker that's kind of all over the place. And so what we want to do to start is we want to just kind of follow along and we want to look for these outliers that are in here that are jumping around and kind of going crazy, right? So this one right here, you can scrub this and see it probably is tracking okay, but I don't think we really need it because we've got better trackers over here. So I'm just going to hit the X key and I'm going to delete that out. And so what we want to do is we want to find those ones that are kind of all over the place and we just want to get rid of them. So, because what we really want is we want something that's not gonna have a gigantic error rate in here. So notice how it's kind of going crazy. So we're just gonna click on the X button or type the X button and we're gonna get rid of that. And so notice how up to this point, these actually do a really good job of tracking in this scene, right? But notice as we go, some of them turn red, which basically means that they've kind of lost tracking. Right, so when they turn red like this, like all the ones on the jeans right here have lost tracking, that's okay. Um, so at some point they're gonna stop. We just wanna make sure in every point in our scene that we have at least eight that are tracking properly. One thing you can do to hide those is you can just do an Alt D in here. That's gonna hide the trackers that have kind of lost tracking. And notice how like right here, we've lost all of the tracking in our scene, right? So there's really no data over here other than these two trackers that are still kind of tracked. Well, all we need to do at that point is just right before we lose the tracking in the scene over here, let's just add some more trackers. So we're just gonna go to this point, click on detect features again. Make sure that we're set to perspective and notice how this basically puts a whole new set of trackers in here that are gonna track in our scene. But then we can just do the same thing or we do a control T and what that's gonna do is that's gonna calculate the movement of those trackers inside of our scene. And so up until the very end here, and even at the very end, we've still got some tracking, these actually do a pretty good job. But we're just gonna do the same thing where we come in here and we delete out the, outliner, out the outliers like this. So you can see how this one, again, just kind of like flies off into the distance. It kind of like goes crazy. So we're just gonna delete that. So I could come in here and add some new trackers like at this point, right? So we'll just do a detect features and maybe I'll just go ahead and add them right here. So we'll just do a detect features, add some more trackers and then do a control T and that'll calculate them here at the end. We just wanna make sure that we have eight trackers at the end of the scene. So we'll delete out these outliers. So I feel like that puts us in pretty good shape. There's a lot of things you can do with the way that these track, but we're not gonna to worry too much about that for right now. All right, so now 
we're ready to solve for our camera motion. Basically what solving means is that means that Blender is gonna come in here and it's going to use the movement of these trackers to calculate where the camera was inside of Blender. So all we have to do is we'll just go back to our first frame over here. We'll go to frame one and we wanna jump over into the solve option right here. Make sure that you check the box for keyframe and you also want to check the box for refine focal length right here. And so then what that's going to allow us to do is that's going to allow us to click on this button for solve camera motion. And what that's going to do is that's going to come in here and do the math on where your camera is. So it's basically going through here and running the numbers. And in a second, it's going to give you some information about how well it did. Awesome. So. If you look in here, notice what this says is this has a solve error of 0.51%. So that's really good. So what we want to target is we want to solve a salt or we want to try to get a solve error below 0.5. That means the blender is actually really confident that it has the camera situation figured out, um, which is good. Now what we could do if you get a higher number in here is there is an option to come in here and get rid of the ones that aren't very good. And so in this case, what we want to do is we want to find um, tracks that basically have an error amount above a certain value. In this case, I'm going to go with an error value of 1.1. And what we want to do is we want to click on the button for filter tracks. What that's going to do is that's going to show us the tracks that have the error rate above 1.1. I can kind of scrub through this and see which tracks those are. Just make sure if I deleted those out that we'd still have eight tracked uh, points at any time. It looks like we would. So I'm just going to type the X key and click on delete track. Well, then what that's going to do, allow me to do is that's going to allow me to solve my camera motion again. So it's going to go through and it's going to solve my keyframes and we can see if our error got any better. So that helped us a little bit. That got us to 0.48. That can be a really helpful tool if you have a bunch of errors in here and you'd basically just repeat those steps over and over again. You just like redo the detect features, you'd redo the camera tracking and you try to get that error down. So now we need to set this up. So we're just gonna go to the solve tab under scene setup. We're gonna click on the option for setup tracking scene. What that's gonna do is that's gonna set up our scene right here, where if I click play, I'm gonna hit the zero key in order to get into my camera right here, but now, if we click play, notice what's happening is our Blender camera is following along with the motion inside of our scene, right? So another way to look at that is if you were to jump over into layout view real quick and just kind of zoom out and hit play and watch your camera. Notice how your camera is going to move around in 3D to match the movement that you had when you did your camera work with uh, whatever you filmed this with. And so notice how though, and you can hit zero in order to jump into that scene to see it. So notice how right now though, our model isn't following along with the camera. And so what we wanna to do to fix that is we wanna set up our floor to follow along with this. And so basically what this wants us to do is this wants us to select three of the trackers that are on the floor. So if I go through here and just do a shift click, and select three of these like this. Then we can go into the orientation tab right here and we can click on the option for floor. And so now notice how this added a floor plane in here that aligns with our scene. You can see it a little better if you jump into the layout view right here. So notice how now our model is actually following along with our camera view in our scene instead of just kind of sitting there in space. And so you can also set the origin of your scene. So basically that allows you to click a point and say that that's gonna be the center of my scene. So in this case, for example, I want this point. I'm gonna click on the button for set origin. And so notice how that adjusts the origin inside of my 3D scene. So you can also do a shift click and click on the button to set scale in order to adjust the scale of this in your scene. You could also just uh, use the scale function in order to model this up and down. And so if we jump back into layout view, notice how now our model object is going to follow along with our scene as if it was on the floor right here. 
And so now that we've got this set up, we're basically gonna do any additional work, probably in layout mode. We're probably pretty close to done with our motion tracking. Um, but what we wanna do is let's say, and I'm gonna move my Bonnie model over a little bit. So we'll set her over here as if she's watching, but then I'm gonna do Shift A, and I'm gonna add a cube right here. I'm just gonna scale that down a little bit. I'm just gonna align that with our floor. And so notice how we're not getting any shadows or anything, and the reason for that is because we're not in rendered mode. So, but let's say that we were in rendered mode, so I'm just gonna do a Shift A, I'm gonna add a point light. Actually, I'm gonna add a sun. I'm gonna do a Shift A, I'm gonna add a sun. And so we're gonna add this in to light our scene. But we have a problem. And the problem is that our sun is in a different collection than our ground, right? So what this did is this automatically put our background in a ground, or it put our ground in a background collection. I'm just gonna drag this into the foreground collection. Well, then what's gonna happen is we're gonna get shadows on that plane. So notice how now if I adjust this, I get a little bit of shadow on my plane like this. And notice how this plane is set up as a shadow catcher. That's why it was important that we set that to transparent in the beginning. But now, if I was to play this, and notice how we're in e or we're in cycle, so it's gonna run a little bit slow. But notice how if we play this, the shadow is gonna follow along with our object in our scene. So what we can do is we can use this in order to render out objects inside of our scenes that'll actually follow along with the camera movement. And so what we could do is we could we could come in here, we could render this image like this, and this is gonna render this out. Notice you could do the same thing with the different clips in order to render out an animation. Um, that would take a lot longer, so we're just gonna render a single image for right now and look at what it does. And so obviously there's things you wanna do to make sure your objects are actually on the ground and other things like that. But this is kind of a quick overview of how you can set up camera motion tracking in order to start adding objects to real world scenes in Blender. All right, so this is kind of a big topic. My recommendation would be just follow through and write down the steps of the tutorials that you see, and then just practice with a couple different scenes in order to see if you can make everything work. But so if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.